Hey guys, I'm back with another movie review, and uh, this one I'm going to review is um, Django. And I know this movie is like really old by now, but it's still so many conversations going on about it, and so many you know topics going on about it. And I understand where everybody's coming from, but I just wanted to do what I saw in the movie or speak about what I saw in the movie. I got a movie from a spiritual perspective, so. Here it goes. By now, everybody should have seen the movie, so you shouldn't know what I'm talking about. Um, or if not, go see the movie. Or may, hopefully, this will inspire you to see the movie or watch the movie again from a different perspective, from the perspective of the spirit. Spirit hair has no color, so this will not be one of those type of uh, reviews. I understand where they're coming from, but this is just what I saw from this. I saw what they saw too, the races and all that, blah, blah, blah. But this is what I also saw from the spirit, spiritual perspective. So right after that, in the beginning of the movie, Django's in Chains. And yes, Django's in Chains just represents, um, excuse me, I had to say excuse me. But this represents him being in bondage by his thought panthers. And it flashes back to him and his, uh, his, him and his wife and how his wife met and all this other stuff throughout the movie. And to me, his wife represents his spirit. His new spiritual, his new spirituality that he found, another level of spirituality that he didn't know existed, and now he had a taste of it. And now he has a taste of it. Now he has to show himself approved for it or work for it. Um, and this happens anything in life. Uh, once we get a taste of something, in order for us to maintain it, we have to go through something. We have to get rid of some stuff in order for us to truly appreciate and understand what we got. Otherwise, there'll always be a mental conflict. Um, like the Bible says, you can't put um, new wine in old wine, old wine skins. Um, that base or or you know, what other people say you have to die to stuff, or you have to um, basically get rid of your old consciousness in order to get a new consciousness. And she represents new consciousness, the spirit of everything. So with that being said, I'm sorry, people walking in out the room. <laughs> but with that, with that being said, uh, now you know he had a taste of it, and now she's gone. So. Now what's going to happen is that he has to do the work, do the conscious effort work. He has to go through his old ways of thinking, all his old patterns of thinking, and he has to kill them off. And to me, this is represented by him going around now. Um, he's a bounty hunter. So as a bounty hunter, now he's going in and he's wrangling up all those old thoughts, wrangling up all those old ways, killing off those old thoughts, like I say, dead or alive, bring it in. But either way, he's gathering up and getting rid of them. Um, he's getting rid of old thought patterns. And this is what I saw as she's going around his bounty had to kill him. Now there's one one part of the movie that as far as this particular aspect that really stood out to me and that's when him and the other dude and the other dude basically to me is represent another aspect of his consciousness that helped him go out and cleanse his old ways. Um cleanse his old ways. Regardless of race, this is what I saw. He's helping him cleanse his old ways, helping him see his old thought patterns. Cleanses old ways, bringing up old truths that no longer serves him for where he has to go. So with that, um, there's one part of the movie that really stood out to me, and that's when they were up on the hill and they were looking down to an uh, older guy and a son, who, and his son, and they were tilling the land. So with them tilling the land, um, he really didn't want to, he saw the little boy, so he didn't want to kill the father because he didn't want to leave the little boy fatherless. But when you look at this, movie from a spiritual perspective I'm sorry I'm looking for my dog when you look at this movie from a spiritual perspective that little boy represents a weed so like weeds you can't just kill the weed you have to kill the roots so from that from a spiritual perspective that was something another thought pattern that had that not only he had but also was rooted and was planting other thought patterns based off of that thought pattern that needs to go it needs to be killed at the root so of course killing the father represented killing the root of that thought pattern and this is what I saw. So they go through all this, you know, and he finally gets to the big house, which is the main issue, the heart of the issue. And in here he finds um, that the true enemy, the real enemy, is the older version of himself. And in reality, the only enemy we truly have is ourselves. It's our thought patterns that creates the issue. So the only enemy really is ourself. Within us is the God and devil. We we create our own heaven and hell, if you believe in that concept. Um, 
if you believe in that kind of stuff, you believe in, you know, the devil kind of stuff, I no longer believe that there is a devil. Um, figuratively or physically, the actual attainable devil that you could touch with, um, no, I don't believe in that. But I do believe, as what I saw in this movie too, is that our true enemy is our, not our true nature, is the false nature that we create for ourselves, whereas everybody else is the problem and not us. In this movie, I, to me, I saw him going through his consciousness, going through stuff that he probably forgot about, take, going through like deep meditations and bringing it up and analyzing it. Because before he killed everybody, he did analyze. He didn't just sit there and go, Pfft. you know, he actually analyzed the situation and thought about it. And it was other aspects of stuff represented by the white guy who was saying that, you know, this has to go. This is this the job you want? You want to do this job? This is what you want to become? This has to go. This is what you have to do. So, you know, when we're doing that, when we're analyzing ourselves, we do, when we're analyzing ourselves to go to the next part of our life, going to a new, uh, spirit, whether it be spiritual, um, business, relationship, whatever, we have to, in order for that part of our life to grow, we have to kill off anything, release anything that does not um, support or go with or help what we're trying to do. So he gets there and he realizes that as that that the true enemy is the old aspect of aspect of self represented by um Samuel Jackson and he is the biggest issue and you know he goes to everything and he doesn't kill off Samuel L. Jackson and he ends up going back into bondage because of that. But then he finally gets it. He he he's like, you know what? I ain't going down like this. I want my woman back. I want my spirit back. I want my spirituality back. I want, I had a taste of it. I'm not letting it go. So he finds to go back, and not only does he kill off his older aspect, but he kills off the house that lives in, the grass around it. He took it down. And at the end, he got his woman. And I loved, I loved it because, like I said, in order to attain that, in order to attain that next level of spirituality, you have to kill off everything that does not serve the purpose of what you are doing. So that is why I love Django. That is what I saw on the movie. I think it was a beautiful ending. He got the woman. He got his new spirituality, new consciousness, whatever you want to call it. And that is my quick review. I hope everybody is well. And blessings.